Hi, this is Kerry Artek with Wicked Stocks bringing you the weekly DIA report. That is the Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF for the week of Monday, January 24th, 2022. Before we jump into the charts, I just want to encourage you to please click like each and every time you watch content that is produced by Wicked Stocks on its YouTube channel. It does help us out a great deal with being found on YouTube with regard to the search engine results. And subscribe. Subscribing to the weekly DIA report or actually subscribing to the Wicked Stocks YouTube channel will provide you notification each and every time new content has been uploaded to the Wicked Stocks channel that includes the weekly DIA report, especially with these weekly videos, seeing them uh, before the opening bell on Monday is important. You know, to see it on Wednesday or Thursday by happenstance, um, you know, that's less than optimal. So um, subscribing will provide you notification when the weekly DIA has been uploaded. So let's take a look at the charts. As the SPY and the Triple Q, the Dow, as you might imagine, sold off heavily last week and settled below the 346.07 channel bottom, the consolidation channel bottom, I call it, slightly rising consolidation channel bottom. Also settled below another channel structure that you can create off the more recent highs at 343.72. So you've got a combination here of 343.72 up to 346.07. There's one slight concern that I have, that we did not settle below either of these formations by the full 1% margin that I like to use for what I call technical clarity, actionable sell signals. That's not to say the Dow won't follow through this week aggressively to the downside, um, but you know, there's a case being made that we could easily spring back above this area. So I guess what I would say is be careful if you want to sell the Dow I don't have an issue with it up to 346.07. But even a daily settlement this week above 346.07, I think we've probably got a good weekly low and the market can run higher. And then if we close the week itself above 346.07, uh, then I think we'll move back into the uh, 370s again within a matter of weeks. But let's work with the assumption <clears throat> that we'll get follow through selling early in the week and the market will continue south. Now, by the way, uh, at the end of the week, you know, if we close below 343.72 by a 1% margin, that is 340.28. I didn't edit that into the visuals, but if you make note of it, I don't want to make a big deal of it, but 340.28. Even if we settle at 340.28 or lower on a daily basis, that in itself is a sign of continued weakness. And then clearly closing the week itself below 340 or or at or below 340.28 would be a clear sell signal. Now, the sell signal in the Dow <clears throat> is very stair step right now because we have a longer term rising channel bottom not far off the mark at 331 half. So we could easily test 331 half this week. Assuming we open Monday below 343.72, it remains heavy into later week, 331 half in reach this week, where we could place a quarterly low, actually. Uh, the channel bottom at 331 half is more significant than the structures you see in the low to mid 340s. So that is a significant support that could contain selling into Q2, and from here we can move higher into later year. Uh, and I might as well add that if we close below 331 half, and it is a steeply rising channel bottom, the steeper the formations, uh, the more prone, of course, they are to violation uh, because over time they just keep moving. And if all the market has to really do is trade sideways and you violate these steeper formations. But if we close below 331 half, then we enter another phase of selling uh, whereby we should test long-term support. Uh, that could take as little as two to three weeks. It may take the better part of a couple of months. I think with this kind of volatility, you're probably looking at two to three weeks. In other words, if we close this week below 331 half, our next target, 316.69, which is long-term support that we settled above over a year ago, that long-term channel top going back to the 2009 financial crisis low. Um, and so it is a significant floor that if tested, can contain selling on an annual basis through the year, possibly through the balance of the decade. From there, we can turn higher, uh, push back into that consolidation range, maybe get caught into it for a prolonged period of time. But in any event, 316.69 should be respected for its ability to contain longer-term selling pressures. So if you're an investor, 
uh, as opposed to just a mere trader. That's a good area to stick your neck out and, and uh, invest in uh, in the Dow, whether it's in the DIA or equivalents. Does, I don't have a strong argument either way. Let's take a look at the upside that if we do, say, close Monday above 346.07, I don't expect to see it. Um, well, let's finish with... Um, uh, the, I, the bigger picture, if we close the week above 346.07, then we should, over the next, could be as quickly as two to three weeks, it could take the better part of two months, five to eight weeks, depending on the behavior in the interim, but of course, 370.57 would be a realistic upside target if we were to close this week back above 346.07, 370.57, that channel top uh able to, once again able to, contain buying uh, on at least a weekly, quite possibly a monthly basis. And closing above 370.57 is sort of our green light uh, for the upside into later year. Uh, I would expect, uh, you know, continued gains into Q2, Q3, Q4 if we were to close above 370.57. I'm not going to show what those targets could be because we really need to see the low put out first. And I, there's a big question right now as to whether this is a good low. Right now, I would say odds favor downside because of that settlement below the 340.372 area, despite the fact that it wasn't by a 1% margin. Uh, on the way up this week, you know, if we do close above 346.07, as I said a moment ago, on Monday, we could uh, reach 357.94 by Friday's close. And this formation, uh, kind of a two-month channel bottom that we opened below last Monday and continued falling uh, through the rest of the week, um, can contain weekly buying pressures, and it is also our recovery point now into February. So if we were to close the week above 357.94, and I think it's a long shot, we could reach 357.94. I don't expect a close above it. But if we did, 370.57, just a few weeks away, where once again we could top out at least on, a, I'd say, a monthly basis. Uh, and it's also a significant upside continuation point into Q2, Q3, so forth and so on. Um, I'll... Um, I think that that's really all that needs to be said. I, I kind of said everything there is to say about the DIA this week. Um, once again, please click like and subscribe. And uh, I'll be back next week for another edition of the weekly DIA, D, weekly DIA report. You have a great week.